It's time to harvest the horseradish. Welcome back to Better Terra. It's that time of year where we harvest our horseradish. We've had a couple, several very hard freezes. And as you can see, the horseradish is very wilted back. And this is the time to get it harvested. I pulled the container bags from the garden space that they were living in uh, for most of the season. And I found that the roots have traveled all the way through and through the felt bag and into the garden space. And I fear that next year, I'm gonna have horseradish growing in that space, uh, whether I like it or not. So I may have to do a lot of uh, weed control in that area. So we're, uh, we're in the part of the year where we don't have a lot of daylight in the afternoons. So after work, I'm trying to get as many of these videos done as, as I can. So the sunlight is already behind. I hope it's not too dark. Um, and I hope these aren't frozen because we've had uh, lots of hard cold. And uh, this is the first day where it's about 55 degrees. Uh, it doesn't feel super solid, but the first thing we're gonna do is take out the foliage and then try to empty the bag inside the wheelbarrow and sort through and see uh, what we got. You can see the roots here through the bottom. They're kind of maybe holding on to the, the plant. I'm gonna see if this little access door will help give me some uh, relief. You see some small roots. It might just give me something to hold on to. I ripped the bag. Well, I think that's gonna be the fate of this one just to tear the bag off of it. Oh wow. It's full of grubs. Ugh, I hate these things. Let me get a close up here with my phone and I'll show you. Look at all these grubs, terrible things. Not much we can do about them at this point. Got a lot of little roots and I think this top portion is frozen. That is unfortunate because that's where all the nice big tuber roots that we're looking for are going to be. Oh, yeah, it's very frozen. So we're gonna take a pause for maybe a couple of days. I'm gonna take the frozen part, uh, put it in something and leave it in the garage for a few days so it can thaw out. I'll go ahead and get the other ones freed down to this frozen root ball and we'll come back in a few days. And we're back. It's been about a week. Uh, the horseradish root balls have been in the garage where it's about 60 degrees. Um, these ones down here actually started to re-sprout. I had this one completely upside down. I don't think it attempted to. Yeah, it did actually. There's some, uh, there's some green regrowing here. Since everything is thawed, we can go ahead and start breaking apart these root balls and see what kind of horseradish production we got. Let's dig into it. Lots better this time. So I'm just kind of lightly 
breaking it apart, working in between the roots. I'm already seeing the advantage of doing horseradish in a container because horseradish is very invasive. It'll spread and always grow wherever you plant it. Um, and you're able to really isolate your root ball production. If you had the tops and were pulling this out of the ground, you would lose all of these pieces or a lot of the bottom pieces. Oh yeah, here's some really big. I'm gonna break this, separate these two sections. I'm gonna try to. Mmm, I can already smell it. So here's some that broke away. I have a container here that later, after we finish get all of our roots, we're gonna go over a little preservation on how you can keep your horseradish throughout the winter months. So put that in there. This is the first time that we have ever grown Horseradish, and there's a big, big knob here. Um, this whole piece is a solid root part. We'll get a better look at that uh, when we get a chance to rinse everything off with water. This is all new growth up here that tried to tried to start back up. Oh, so nice! But once we get that rinsed, we're going to have a lot of good good horseradish to work with. And then these uh, little pieces here, you can use those as well, as well. Several of these I'm gonna save to replant next year. A whole plant will restart from something like this. Here's another. Here's another big big knob of horseradish. Make sure we get all of our little little runaways here. And let me go ahead and start breaking apart. The other two are going to be just like this. And I'll come back to the end and show you uh, just what we got. All right, I finished separating all of the roots from the soil and I have them laid out here on our drying rack. We threw this together uh, earlier in the year when we did onions and garlic curing. So it's gonna work good now for a rinsing rack. Um, over here on the side of the house, I have a very short hose connected. I'm already winterized because uh, our temperatures are very low. It's probably 28 degrees right now. So um, playing in the water is fun. <laughs> so let me come in close. We'll get a shot here of uh, the rinse off and we'll really see uh, what we got. Turn the water on first. I'll go ahead and rinse this side and then get everything a good flip it over. All right, give everything a, a flip here.
we're not looking for spotless. Just most of the dirt off. This one's really big. I'm really happy with what we got here. With the dirt clean off, we can really see that we have some really big main roots. I guess that's the, the tuber and these are the, the tap roots. Um, these tap roots, a lot of these can be processed in the same way to eat. They're gonna be nice and spicy. Let's, uh, let's, try, a, let's try a piece here, just down there, dirty and all. <clears throat> it has heat or whatever horseradish is equivalent in. It's not exactly capsaicin hot, but it's, it's got some, <laughs> It's got some spice behind it, I'm not gonna lie. Whew. Oh no good, my nose is opening up. The next step is I'm gonna show you a process on how to store it uh, for long term in your basement or your cellar. Okay, so we're set up a little bit differently now. We came over here by the greenhouse. So we have a little bit of a work surface. I'm not gonna lie, my hands are pretty cold, so I'm gonna put my gloves back on. And we're gonna dig into trimming these up a little bit. So I'm gonna start with one of the big ones here. Let's make a bunch of noise. And I'm gonna work down to the big, the big node. So I'm gonna cut off um, the small tap roots, pull out any sticks. <laughs> and break some of them off. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, this piece here looks like it was from the original taproot that I planted. So I'm gonna remove that, toss that in the yard. The squirrels can have a field day. Squirrels are already having a field day, it sounds like. <laughs> these little tiny ones here, these are just gonna get discarded. We can't do much with those. So we'll put these down here. And then I'm gonna trim off um, the greens here that started to try to grow back. Take them just down below the little growth collar. I don't wanna dig too much into the flesh, but I definitely want to get rid of this growth. I'm gonna kind of rough, rough trim that off there and then, then work down closer. All right, there's one. Um, knob of horseradish. Um, I don't know what else it'd be called. I'm, I'm seeing though my gloves are dirty. I'm gonna give this another rinse before I go into the final uh, storage. And like I said, all of this can be processed and used also. I'm just gonna set it off here to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and work through um, the rest, another really nice piece. If you missed the episode where we planted the horseradish earlier in the season, uh, we've got that video. We have an update video somewhere in the middle. It's a short, um, I'll put a link to that down in the description. But again, another nice, nice piece of horseradish. If you know what the main part of the horseradish is called, is it a knob or a thumb of horseradish? Uh, leave me a comment below, I'm, cu I'm curious.
I got one last here. Get some close-ups of this one. I'm trying to keep it down here flat so it'll stay in focus. So I'm just nipping off these long tap roots. And if you look, if you look close, there's a little shoulder where it joins, and I'm doing it just above the shoulder where it jo joins the main the main body. Um, if they're easy, just to snap off. You can do that too. They tend to snap off at that same junction shoulder. Removing all these little thin hair-like ones. Saving anything that has any kind of substantial bulk to it. All right, and then Removing the greens here. Now, if you're pulling these out of the ground, you're gonna have the same greens. They're gonna be a lot longer, um, like we did in the beginning of the video, where I just kind of ripped the tops off. Uh, these are, this is all regrowth from being in the garage for a week. So we just take those off. There's a lot of dirt. Oh, there's a, here's a worm that was stuck in there. We'll get him in the yard. And it's in the afternoon here. We're losing, losing daylight, and the temperature is starting to drop a little bit. So there we are. Let's get these things out of the way. Clean up my table here a little bit. Bring everything in the middle. So out of three bags that we planted all this stuff in, the, the felt planting bags, I'll put a link to those down below. This is everything that we got after the trimming. These are the main tubers, knobs, thumbs. I don't know what the name is. I think this, after we process it, uh, shred it, grind it, make horseradish spread or horseradish to go with some uh, uh, nice venison that made it to our freezer, freezer this fall. I don't know yet. Um, but these are just the main tubers. We're going to give those another rinse in the house under the warm water here in a second. But look at this. These are the secondary roots. And there's a lot here. Certainly more than we're gonna be able to, uh, to consume. So my plan is, since these were shared with me, I'm gonna share these with some of my uh, local gardening friends. And they can uh, store these in a nice cool dark place until spring, and then put them in a container, put them in the ground, and then they can share uh, in having horseradish also. I'm gonna store these a little bit differently than I'm gonna store those. I'm gonna go ahead and store all of the main, all of the main roots. Got one running away there. Because like I said, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do to process them yet. Whether I'm gonna go ahead and shred it, try to uh, use a canning method to preserve it. Uh, but right now, I'm gonna take them in and give them a rinse. And then I'm going to show you a method uh, that I'm going to use in the temporary, but that also uh, works for the long term. So give me a second. I'll give them a rinse and I'll come right back. Okay, so in the house, in my utility sink, I gave everything a good wash and a scrub with a vegetable brush. I wanted to get most of the dirt off. There's still some, some <laughs> there's still some in some nooks and crannies there. Uh, but I gave it a good scrub with a vegetable brush, I'm trying to get as much off as possible uh, to limit the amount of bacteria uh, that's left in the soil to be on these to, to, that would promote uh, any kind of uh, rot uh, while being stored. So that being said, let's talk about the storage process. We're going to use this container here and make some more noise. 
This container uh, has a lid, um, something we bought on eBay was shipped in this uh, inside of another box. So we're gonna repurpose it. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do, uh, I have a bag here of multi-purpose like playground sand. And we're going to cut our bag open. <clears throat> it's getting cold. I'm gonna use my new trowel that I got for my birthday. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. And I'm gonna scoop some sand into the container here. I'm gonna pour some sand into the container here. This will pour a nice layer just to coat the bottom. Get it even. And now we wanna moisten it a little bit. So, moist. Not wet, moist. Um, so I have my watering can here. I'm gonna give it a little. <laughs> That's not working very well at all. Give it just a little sprinkle. And I'm gonna make sure that it All the sand gets mixed in and is moist. If you leave dry sand, it'll it'll wick the, the moisture away. That's pretty good. It's got nice moist. Make it mostly flat. Makes more noise. Doesn't flatten as well when it's wet, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna take our horseradish and we're gonna place them in here flat in the sand. Trying not to, for them to touch. Because we want sand to surround the whole piece. So we'll Strategically put them in there, push them down into the sand a little bit. It turns out this container is the perfect size. So there we go. There is our horseradish on a layer of moist sand. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna cover these with more sand. So I'm going to do a layer, not completely covering them yet, and then add some water, and add some sand. Now I have read, but never tried, storing carrots and radishes using this method. We could have made our bottom layer uh, much thicker and really nestled the big pieces down farther because I'm having to put a lot on the top because there's one rather large piece. We're gonna make a little mound on top of it. And add our last little bit. Uh, and I can see on the side here, the water moving through. So it doesn't look like I have any dry spots or air pockets. So we're gonna put our lid on it. Mm. 
we'll slap a label on it so we don't forget uh, what's in it. Then I'm gonna put it down in the basement where the onions and the potatoes are stored. This is December the 3rd. We don't have a lot of potatoes and only a couple of onions left. Still a lot of garlic though. So our basement, uh, not the best temperature or humidity level for storing. It's all we got, but it does the job, especially since we're not storing large amounts. We're really storing enough down there because it's just uh, two people in the house. This brings the horseradish journey full circle from planting, update, and storage. Um, maybe I'll do a recipe episode here in the winter time when I don't have anything to grow. Episodes in the winter are a little bit, uh, a little bit sparse. So maybe I'll do a uh, horseradish recipe. I'll have to look for something interesting. This episode uh, taught you something, uh, was fun to watch me be out here in the cold. Uh, click that like button. Uh, let us know that we're doing a good job. If you want to see more episodes coming uh, here in the winter, be sure to click subscribe and uh, ring that bell icon so you get a notification when I upload a video. So now that we have our horseradish all tucked in for the months to come, I want to give a shout out to my uncle who shared this with me. Thank you. I'm going to spread the love and share it with some other friends. We appreciate you watching. Come on back next time as we keep on working toward a better Terra one spicy treat at a time. <laughs>